being young can be tough. Nobody takes you seriously. Nobody trusts you to know what's right for yourself. And if you go to school, it's possible you've become so dependent on adults for instructions and permission, you don't know what's right for yourself. But I think you can break free of your conditioning. And if you really want to, this video might help. I recently read an excellent pamphlet by Crime Think that of course I link to in the description about how young people could respond to school shootings. It had the regular stuff I would expect from radicals like Crime Think, like explaining how gun control is racist and more school security would be bad for everyone. I just think it's missing one crucial step to youth liberation abolishing the school. I've thought about this for a long time, but I still get laughed at for proposing abolishing school. People go, lol, what's your alternative then? There's always an alternative. If you can't think of it, get more people with more ideas to help you. That's why my channel exists, and I do have a video on the alternative to school. Some people can understand community care instead of police and prisons, but not community learning instead of school. They can understand people taking control of their own security, housing, food, and workplaces, and so on, but not students taking control of their own learning. It's a big topic, so check out my playlist in the description. I am here today to tell students that you are the best people to control your own education and school is not the way to do it. Practically everything you do in school is bad for you. You sit for long periods of time. You're trained to ask permission for everything, so you're not allowed to think for yourself. Everything you do and say is supposed to please your teachers and your parents. You're not allowed to ask the really challenging questions, and soon you learn to stop asking meaningful questions altogether. No more, who says and why should I, just what do we have to do and when do we have to do it. You might end up hating reading or math or learning a second language, not because those things are inherently odious, but because you weren't taught properly. The school destroys you as an individual, as you're forced to act and think the same as everyone else. And yet, it doesn't teach you to work together either, because you're forced to be quiet and work on your own. Those people who say, Without school, how would kids learn social skills? Seem to think sitting at a desk all day and then getting bullied at lunch is learning social skills. Everything you're taught is because the people in power want you to think that way. Your parents say the same things because they've never questioned what they've been taught. That's why they make you sing the national anthem or pledge allegiance to a flag. They want you to believe the same lies about countries and duties that they learned in school. And because schools mimic the social hierarchy, there will inevitably be bullying, racism, or some other kind of bigotry in school. But possibly the worst thing about school is how it normalizes everything. School is where you learn to believe in all the lies of society. They'll tell you you live in a democracy and your vote counts. <laughs> They'll tell you capitalism is a system of freedom because you have some small amount of choice over which rich person you're going to work for. They'll tell you the prison is where bad people go to get turned into good people. They'll tell you about the huge environmental problems you're going to face throughout your lives and say you can help by recycling and getting an electric car. They might even tell you the native people of the land your school is built on voluntarily stepped aside so white people could colonize it. 
Have you seen this before? It's a shameful whitewashing of history because they don't want you to know the truth. They'll tell you if you don't go to school, you won't be prepared for the real world. But actually, the opposite is true. School keeps you isolated from the real world and teaches you to believe in a fantasy world. The sooner you leave school, the sooner you can start to learn about the world. The point is, you're not in school to expand your mind and discover your talents. That was just another lie. You're in school so you can be broken down and tricked and molded into someone who accepts this shitty system and doesn't question it. I wish I had overthrown my school, but instead I spent 20 years believing what I was taught. Don't let that happen to you. When I say overthrow the school, what do I mean? Again, I want students to take control of their own learning. That can only happen through some fundamental change in the way school works. It might mean you force the staff to accept changes that empower students. It might mean leaving school altogether and starting something new. Overthrowing your school isn't about having no teachers. Teachers can be extremely useful. It's possible one or more of your teachers or parents will be on board with the idea of overthrowing the school, and if so, they might help you. If not, well, you could make them watch my videos until they get it, but I wouldn't be too hopeful. If my experience is any guide, most teachers and parents will be committed to not understanding you. That's why you need to be really sure this is something you want before you start doing it. The point of leaving school behind is to take control of your learning and not get indoctrinated into someone else's propaganda. What if you don't overthrow your school? You could resist your conditioning on your own. You could read lots of books about how school and propaganda and society actually work, and I can recommend you some if you like. But what about everyone else? What if you free your own mind, but everyone around you continues to believe what they've been told? What if your school turns out yet another generation of clueless adults? And how would you resist? Individual acts of disobedience just get you sent to detention or even jail. They might make you look like a rebel. Ooh, look at me, I'm a rebel. But they don't stop the school from killing everyone else's spirit. You could try to have teachers fired, but they'll replace them. You could even try to burn the school to the ground, but they'd just build another. Working with other people is how you transform society. If you can explain to your fellow students why school is wrong, you can overthrow it together. School convinces you that you have no power, that all power rests with authority. Authority decides when force will be used against you. That's how authority works in this world. But the only reason they can use force against you is because they're a highly organized group, and you are not. The government, the police, the school, these are all organizations. And when something threatens their interests, they leap into action. Well, students can organize too. And they do. Of course, the idea of overthrowing something conjures up images of violence and fire and guillotines and so on, but I don't think violence is necessary to overthrow the school. There are probably at least 10 times more students than staff at any given school. How many could engage in civil disobedience to force a change in the way things are done? Of course, you need to have demands. Well, what specifically needs changing? What changes can you persuade other students to get on board with? 
Do you want to force a single change? Like when a teacher or student gets punished unfairly and you demand the school take it back? Do you want shorter class hours and longer breaks? An end to homework? Or do you want students to abandon the school altogether, like I suggest, and control their own education? You'll need to find the right way for each of those goals. Everything you do should have a goal and a plan to reach it. Here are some things other people have done. There's the lockout, where you lock administrators out of the school, or part of it, as these students did to protest racism at school. Kind of the opposite of a lockout is a walkout, where you walk out in the middle of class in protest, like these students did to protest sexual violence. They also call this kind of protest a student strike, like the student strike of 1970, where hundreds of thousands of students protested the war on Vietnam. But I think strikes are a bit different, and I would still call it a walkout. You could just try mass absenteeism. In other words, just don't show up for school. I think education is still really important, so avoiding school should only be about setting up your own classes outside school. Maybe online, but however you think would be the most effective uh, way to learn the topic and reach your goals. I'm sure you can think of other tactics. Use your imagination. Any of these things are overthrowing your school because they all overturn the relations between student and teacher. Instead of the people at the top calling all the shots, now it's the students. You need a bunch of your fellow students to agree, of course. They should all know what they're getting into and why. That could be the hardest part. You can lay the groundwork with classes after school, setting everything up so you can transition to real education and leave the school behind. In those classes, you can figure out your goals and your plan. The obvious drawback to quitting school for anyone is there are now a, a, a huge number of jobs you're not going to be qualified for. Um, if you don't go to school, you can't go to university, and if you don't go to university, you don't get the piece of paper those jobs require. You could learn the skills, you just can't legally get a degree. But the whole point of leaving school is to pursue your own education for your own life, not to get a job. So even before you start organizing classmates, you need goals. You want to know what you want to learn and how you're going to learn it. You can set learning goals for each subject you're interested in. You don't have to have an end goal, a single purpose that all your learning is leading to. That said, one great way of planning your learning is to decide what you want to do first. Say, designing some software, or building a car, or painting a picture. Then figuring out what skills and resources you need and how to get them. It's still a good idea to learn in groups, just not necessarily the big groups of other kids the same age and with different abilities that you're used to. I suggest groups no bigger than about five. Find one to four other students who want to learn the same thing or want to join your project, set your learning goals, and find resources, like teachers. You can design classes together as students or maybe in conjunction with a regular teacher or a guest lecturer. If you want to learn sports or something else, you might want a coach rather than a teacher. You might want to read up on effective classes and effective learning, and how to design classes with no teacher. I can probably help you out at every stage of the process, if you like. I suggest you study the psychology of learning and memory, which could have been so useful to me in school, but nobody ever tried to teach me. You could learn about different teaching methods so you can have an opinion on the best way to teach. And like I said in my last video, if you know something, you can teach it. 
You could learn about critical thinking and self-awareness. You could learn about cognitive biases. You could learn about systems like the economy, money, the government, the police, and for that matter, the school. Whatever you decide, if you want to liberate yourself, form groups, educate yourselves, undermine the system, and use my channel to help. See ya.